Isaiah 28 to 30. Woe to the crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim and to the fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fertile valley of those who are overcome with wine. Behold, Adonai has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying storm, and like a storm of mighty waters overflowing. He will cast them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trotted underfoot. The fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fertile valley, shall be like the first ripe fig before the summer, which someone picks and eats as soon as he sees it. At, in that day, Adonai Sveot will become a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to, res, to the residue of his people and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and strength to those who turn back to the battle at the gate. They also reel with wine and stagger with strong drink. The Kohen and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They stagger with strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are completely full of filthy vomit, and no place is clean. Whom will he teach knowledge? To whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For it is a precept on precept, precept on precept, line on line, line on line, here a little, there a little. But he will speak to this nation with stammering lips and another tongue, to whom he said, This is the resting place, give rest to weary, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Therefore the word of Yahweh will be to them precept on precept, precept on precept, line on line, line on line, here a little, there a little, that they may go, fall backward, be broken, be snared, and be taken. Therefore, hear the word of Yahweh, you scoffers, that rule this people in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and we are in agreement with Sheol. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made lies a refuge, and we have hidden ourselves under falsehood. Therefore Adonai, Yahweh, says, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a testing stone, a precious cornerstone, of a sure foundation. He who believes will not be in haste. I will make justice the measuring line, and righteousness the plumb line. The, the hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death shall be annulled, and your arrangement with Sheol shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. As often as it passes through, it will seize you by morning. For morning by morning, it will pass through by day and by night, and it will be nothing but terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch out on, and the blanket is too narrow to wrap oneself in. For Yahweh will rise up as on mountain Pirazim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his unusual work, and bring to pass his act, his extra, extraordinary act. Now therefore, do not be scoffers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard a decree of destruction from Adonai Elohi Svaot on the whole earth. Give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my speech. Does he who plows to sow plow continually? Does he who keep turning the soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled its surface, does not he plant the dill, scatter the cumin seeds, and put in the plate? Put in the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place. For his God instructs him in right judgment and teaches him. For the dill are not threshed with a sharp instrument, neither is a cartwheel turned over the cumin. But the dill is beaten out with a stick and the cumin with a rod. Bread flour must be ground, so he will not, take a, so he will not always be threshing it. 
Although he drives the wheel of his threshing cart over it, his horses do not grind it. This also comes out of Adonai Svaot, who is a wonderful who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom. Woe to Ariel, Ariel, the city of David in the city of David camped. Add year to year, lest the feast come around, then I will distress Ariel, and there will be mourning and limitation, and she shall be to me as an Ariel. I will encamp against you all around you. I will lay seas against you with post troop, posted troops. I will rise siege works against you. You will be brought down and will speak out of the ground. Your speech will mumble out of the dust. Your voice will be as one who has a familiar spirit out of the ground, and your speech will whisper out of the dust. But the multitude of your foes, foes will be like fine dust, and the multitude of your ruthless ones like chaff that blows away. And it will be in an instant, suddenly, she, she will be visited by Adonai Svaot with thunder and earthquake, with great noise, with whirlwind and storm, and with the flame of the devouring fire. The multitude of the nations that fight against Ariel, even all who fight against her in her stronghold, and who distress her, will be like a, di will be like a dream, a vision of the night. It will be like a hungry man. It will be like when a hungry man dreams, and behold, he eats, but he awakes, and his hunger is not satisfied. Or like a thirsty man dreams, and behold, he drinks, but awakes, and behold, he is faint and is still thirsty. The multitude of the nations that fight like Mount Zion will be like that. Stop and wonder, bind yourselves and be blind. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For Yahweh has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. He has closed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. All vision has become to you like a works of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one who is educated, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to one who is not educated, saying, Read this, please. And he said, I cannot read it. Then Adonai said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear of me is a mitzvot taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do marvelous works, to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. And the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and their understanding, and the understanding of their prudent men will be hidden. Woe to those who deeply hide their counsel from Yahweh, and whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us, and who knows us? You, you turn things upside down. Should the potter be thought to be the, like the clay, and the thing that made should say about him who made it? He did not make me, or the thing formed say of him who formed it. He has no understanding. It is not yet a, little, a very little while, and Lebanon will be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field will be regarded as a forest. In that day, the deaf will hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind will see out of the obscurity of their darkness. The humble also will increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor among men will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless is brought to nothing, and the scoffers ceases, and all those who are alert to do evil are cut off, who cause a person to be in, indicted by a word, and lay a snare for the arbiter in the gate, and who deprive the innocent of justice with false testimony. Therefore, this is what Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham, says concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall no longer be ashamed, neither shall his face grow pale. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands, in the middle of him, they will sanctify my name. Yes, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. They also who err in spirit will come to understanding, and those who grumble will receive instruction. Woe to the rebellious children, says Yahweh, who take counsel but not from me, and who make an alliance but not of my Ruach, that they may add sin to sin, who set out to go down into Egypt, and have not asked my advice, 
to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to take refuge in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh will be your shame and the refuge in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For their princes are at Zoan and their ambassadors have come to Hanes. They shall be ashamed because of the people that cannot profit them, that are not a help nor profit but of shame and also a reproach. The burden concerning the beast of the south, though the land of the trouble and anguish, the lioness and the lion, the viper and the fiery flying serpent, they carry their riches on the shoulders of a young donkey and the treasures on the humps of camels to an unprofitable people. For, the e for Egypt helps in vain and to no purpose. Therefore I have called her Rehab, who sits still. Now go, write it before them on a tablet and inscribe it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. For it is a rebellious people, lying children, children who do not hear the Torah of Yahweh, who tell the seers do not see, and the prophets do not prophesy to us right things. Tell us pleasant things, prophesy deceits. Go out of the way, turn away from the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Therefore the Holy One of Israel says, Because you despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and rely on it, therefore this iniquity shall be to you like a branch ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant. He will break it as a potter's vessel is broken, breaking it in pieces without sparing, so that there will not be found among the broken pieces a piece good enough to take fire from the hearth or to dip up the water out of the cistern. For thus says Adonai, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, you will be saved in returning and rest. Your strength will be in quietness and confidence. You refused, and you said, No, for we will flee on horses, therefore you will flee, and we will ride on the swift, therefore those who pursue you will be swift. One thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five you will flee until you are left like a beacon on top of a mountain and like a banner on a hill. Therefore Yahweh will wait that he may be gracious to you and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you for Yahweh is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people who dwell in Zion at Jerusalem you will weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the voice of your cry. When he hears you, he will answer you. Though Adonai may give the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be hidden anymore. But your eyes will, but your eyes will see your teachers. And when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. You shall defile the, over, the overlaying of your engraved images in, of silver and the planting of your molten images in gold. You shall cast them away as an unclean thing. You shall tell it, go away. He will give the rain for your seed with which you will sow the ground and bread on the increase of the ground will be rich and plentiful. In that day your livestock will feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise and the young donkeys that till the ground will eat savory feed, which has been winnowed with the shovel and with the fork. There will be brooks and streams of water on every lofty mountain and every hill in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of the seven days, in the day that Yahweh binds up the furnace of his people and heals the wounds that were struck, they were struck with. Behold, the name of Yahweh comes from far away, burning with his anger and his thick rising smoke. His lips are full of indignation. His tongue is a devouring fire. His breath is an overflowing stream that reaches even to the neck to stiff the nations with the sieve of destruction. A bridle that leads to ruin will be in the jaws of the people. You will have a song as in the night when a holy feast is kept, the gladness of heart, as when one goes with a flute to come to the mountain of Yahweh, to Israel's rock, 
and Yahweh will cause his glorious voice to be heard and will show the descent of his arm. With the indignation of his anger and the flame of devouring fire and the flame of a devouring fire, with a blast, storm, and hailstones. For through the voice of Yahweh, the Assyrian will be dismayed. He will strike him with his rod, every stroke of the rod of punishment, which Yahweh will lay on him, will be with the sound of the tambourines and harps. He will fight with them in battles, brandishing weapons. For his burning place has long been ready. Yes, the king, it is prepared. He has made its pry deep and large with fire and much wood. The breath of Yahweh, like a stream of sulfur, kindles it.